Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. I want to start doing some pure MMT videos uh, based on the post that I, I put up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to describe the real macro monetary economics in the real world. Not bumper stickers. In the real world. How it actually really does work. Okay. It's pure MMT for the 100%, beyond the main, the means, all right? It's beyond that. It's pure. It's 100%. It works in all nations on the planet, all economies, all currencies. The real description. That's what pure MMT is about. All right, number one. Let's just kind of get this out of the way. Government debt equals private sector assets. The word assets is not true. Government doesn't have anything to give you. Okay? It doesn't have anything. The government can only give you worthless digits. Those digits can only be valued by the private sector. If I create more slices on a pizza pie, it's not going to make the pizza pie bigger. Okay? If I put more numbers or higher numbers on a yardstick, it's not going to be more than a yard. It's still going to be a yard. Okay. Now, the fact that the government can print worthless digits does not mean that the, the, the currency as a whole is worthless. There's a difference between the two, and you should understand that. Okay. So, no matter whether it's private or public, money creation does not make for more economy, more pizza, more yardstick. The only time the deficits make sense are when the deficits are not much more than the growth of GDP the real productive economy okay if it's in excess of the growth of the economy then the, the digits are worthless it's just more slices on a pizza pie in a perfect economy GDP should be 3% and deficit should be one percent one and a half percent that's creating wealth if the deficits are 20 percent like they are now <laughs> and the economy is not even growing that's a default okay it's just adding numbers to a yardstick it's not making a yardstick any bigger and it does not matter where those digits are spent I hear that from MMTers all the time. Well, it's just not the way we would spend them. It doesn't matter how you spend them. Because of profit. What is profit? You see, for profit to exist, the income of the household must be the saved. Okay? There's no other way you can create profit. The household income must be desaved, and then that becomes profit, and those profits become savings. If the money starts making it back into the productive economy where the household exists, the 95%, to create income for the household to desave, in an ecosystem feedback loop, then it becomes profit savings and only to get reinvested and you get this ecosystem feedback loop. Then, and only then, are you going to have a good economy. If, on the other hand, the government just prints up worthless digits, funds household income that is saved, that becomes profit, savings and then those savings do not make it back into the productive economy 
as they should, and they go off to be speculated with in stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate and asset prices, and then you're creating a savings bubble. Okay? You're creating a savings bubble. Because that money, if it's guaranteed that you're going to make money in stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate, because the government is only going to print more and more and more and more, then you end up in a scenario where it's not beneficial for savers to invest back into the productive economy. And when that happens, deficits must be increased. And they'll keep on increasing. And, you know, they say, well, it's a deficit myth. We could just print whatever we want. Money is infinite. No, it's not. No, it's not, because eventually you end up like Lebanon. They, too, thought the deficits were a myth as well. They, too, were printing assets, quote-unquote, for the people's economy. Who got stuck paying for it? The rich? The 5%? Who took their money and ran? And then the 95% are stuck now with the carnage? And now they have to deal with austerity? Deal with inflation? And they are the ones that are going to have to pay for it. You see, unlike money that has like little wings on them and they start flapping and then they fly away electronically, instantly, humans can't grow wings and just say, oh, I'm leaving Lebanon, I'm going to go somewhere else so I don't have to pay for it. Uh Uh-uh, they're stuck. And that's why government debt equals private sector savings for the top 5% and the liabilities of those savings go to the 95%. So when Stephanie Natasha Kelton is sitting here telling you, um, or Comrade is telling you, oh, their red ink is our black ink. Our, our, our. No, there's no our. Our is the top 5%. Our, 95%, get the liabilities. Okay, look look at today. We we got helicopter money, right? We spent $6 trillion a little over a year. Home prices are up 24%. Is that our savings? No? Is it our savings? You're going to go and, and sell your house and you're going to be rich? Yeah? What are you going to do when you sell your house? You're going to go buy another house, right? you got to live somewhere. You want to buy it next year or a couple months from now and it's going to be up 10%? So you're going to sell one home for 100000 then you're going to go buy another home for 110 that's our savings? You think you made money? So who's paying for it now? Who's paying for it? You are paying for it through inflation. It costs 24% more to buy a home this year than it did last year. Do you see MMT up in arms screaming, oh my God, inflation is the limit? Stop the deficits. Stop the deficit myths. Stop printing for the people's economy. You're killing us? Of course not. Of course not. MMT is going to sit here and tell you, oh, well, no true Scotsman would really spend the money that way. They're just going to give you an excuse. Like Wellington Wimpy. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Meaning that, believe what I'm telling you, that we need more deficits today. And I promise you in the future, you're going to be prosperous because government that has nothing is going to give you endless worthless digits. If the first $28 trillion did not make you happy as an mm and you're crying the blues daily on social media <laughs> all over the place, the echo chamber is just, they're all crying every single day. If the first $28 trillion didn't make you happy, what makes you think that the next $28 trillion is going to make you happy? $28 trillion for 330 million people you should all be stuffed with our savings. Instead, you're sitting here on social media crying the blues and telling me how great MMT is. MMT is a Trojan horse. 
and no matter how they spend it, it doesn't matter, it's always going to flow through the productive economy, household income to savings, profit savings, and it's going to end up into asset price inflation, stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate. Okay? And that's why you see in the asset prices, you've been seeing for years now, hyperinflation. Because the economy has not grown at the same rate as asset prices. And as a result, that money is only flowing to the assets, stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate, what is happening to the real economy? Relative to where the growth was, it is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. It's not getting bigger. It's not getting bigger. And that's why you're crying the blues. It's because these deficits are backstopping risk for stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate and screwing the poor, screwing the people that you claim you're trying to help. Why would savers go and invest in the real economy where they can lose their money when they know it's going to be backstopped by government deficits? Right? They're going to go out and buy bonds. Who cares? You have the quantitative easing program. You don't want the bond. Don't worry about it. Sell it to the government at a higher price than what you bought it. Keep repeating as necessary. It's like going to the casino. I bet red up oh, black came out sorry you lose a thousand dollars but hey don't worry about it you know we like you here take your thousand dollars back bet again i bet red again black comes out oh don't worry about it my man don't worry about it here take a thousand dollars do it again up you won hey you get to keep it right socialism for the rich that's what mnt is and that's why the more we print the more we need to print and the more we will print because the name of the game is to backstop asset price speculation. God forbid the stock market goes down. God forbid real estate goes down. The banks are going to be blown up. Okay. God forbid bonds start to rise. Right? Can you imagine if we unleashed $8 trillion of bonds into the open market? What would happen in interest rates? They would go to 20%. They would explode. What would happen in private uh, credit creation? It would implode. What would happen to the productive economy? It would implode. Instantly. That's the reality. Right? So remember, public debt is private sector savings for the top 5%, okay, and liabilities to the 95%. Because this money has wings and flies, and you don't. And you don't. If the government could produce value for the units of measure, for the medium unit of exchange used to facilitate transactions, if it could give it value, none of us would ever have to work. We would just sit home, the government would print up money with value, hand it to everybody. And we would all be rich. Venezuela would be the world's mightiest, greatest economy in the world. Argentina, Turkey, Indonesia, Tunisia, Egypt, Nigeria, Zimbabwe. Okay? doesn't work like that. I'm sorry it doesn't. I wish it did. Okay? But it does not work that way. And that's because of profit right here right here the more that the government keeps funding income household the more savings for the top five percent the more investment in asset prices the less investment into the real economy and you got the economy slowing and you got the money supply and deficits and debt to GDP exploding and you're waiting for an economy to improve for the people when they're heading clearly in the wrong direction. So MMT, MMTers are like Christians against Christ. 
That's what they are. They claim, oh, we're going we're gonna to save the poor. We're going to save the poor. We're just going to deficit spend and save the poor. When all they're doing is <laughs> saving the rich. So remember, no matter if it's a bank or the government, all money is money. doesn't matter. Okay? It'll funnel through the productive economy, end up with the top 5%, top 5%. Go out and buy the bonds that are going to fund deficits only to repeat the process all over again. Give them more savings, more bonds, more wealth. Um, as the country is looted. Right? You're converting wealth to dollars. Okay? those dollars buy the bonds and then when the dollars start to create wings they start selling the bonds taking cash and go overseas with it and you're stuck paying the liabilities interest rates go through the roof dollar collapses okay I'm not saying it's gonna happen tomorrow I don't know when it's gonna happen it could happen a hundred years from now it doesn't matter we're still headed in the wrong direction, running at top speed in the dark, pretending that we can stop before the snap moment, right? Before we go over the edge. We don't know where the, the edge is. Nobody knows. But it's there. And you know how I know it's there? Because 148 now, nations have blown up their currency local currency 148 nations since 1960 so in 61 years 148 nations thought that deficits are a myth we're printing for the people blah 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 sound familiar yeah it should all right I'm going to be uh, making more of these videos, hopefully a little bit shorter. All right, we'll, we'll go over all these posts here. And uh, you know, look at Lebanon now. Bank runs. People are frustrated. 95% of the liabilities are being recognized. Savers took their money and ran. They sold the bonds, got out. Unbelievable. All right, guys. Take care. Uh, have a great 4th of July weekend. Uh, I'm going to make more of these videos. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.